Tessa from Ksenia's wellness team here coming to you from my healing space as always but sitting right on the floor like I do during client sessions well actually I'm on a cushion today um, but I had this deep calling to do a video for you this time that's not so much about information or storytelling or sharing techniques and all the stuff that I've covered in the last few videos. I wanted to just talk from my heart about the spiritual path and perhaps share a little bit about star beings, um, ascended beings, higher energies that we connect with. So I might close my eyes from time to time in this video because I'm feeling this deep stirring in my heart to I guess share some of my medicine as I talk to you today. A lot of the other videos have been information based and educational because you know I haven't made many ch videos for this channel yet so it makes sense to start with some groundwork but I'm really coming into this energy of wanting to share with you the medicine of what I work with so today I asked spirit to actually pull the card on what I should talk to you about and the card that came up is called inner temple and it has the word devotion on it and that's what really stood out to me and the more I kept asking spirit what do you want me to share what do you want me to talk about about the inner temple there was just this stillness and this energy and this vibrating feeling I could feel in my heart space and this is what makes me close my eyes is that feeling of spirit stirring within us right so devotion is the focus on this video of this video because to me that's what the spiritual path is all about and it's not sacrificing yourself to someone or something and it's not devotion that's you know because because someone's expecting it from you it's devotion because it's that feeling in your heart that spirit is there and that there is more to this world than what we see and what most people perhaps engage with on a daily basis. So I'm going to share with you some ways that devotion and this deep feminine sacred energy shows up in my life and ways you can perhaps work with it. So first of all, I want to come back to the whole, you know, we make the spiritual path so much about doing sometimes in the West and it's not doing, it's being. And although there's so many fun spiritual things to do <laughs> nowadays, it's really about coming into that stillness within yourself. And I think that literally is your path. And that's the number one thing that most people don't do. You know, we'll buy hundreds of books and watch videos and we'll learn about all kinds of things. But can we sit for half an hour just with ourselves? And, you know, literally that is how spirit's going to connect with you. And sometimes we have to do some groundwork to get there. You know, um, we might have to give up alcohol or we might have to uh, reduce the amount we spend on social media or, you know, we might have to really make space and facilitate the ability to hear ourselves and to hear spirit. But ultimately, it becomes your life. It's a way of living. It's a path, right? It's not something you do one hour on the you know, week, you know, in a class. It's how you live your life. And to me, it took years to get to a stage where I felt this energy running my life, where spirit and the spiritual perspective and the energy from the heart space comes before the brain, right? I use my brain, but the heart's leading. And most of us do the other way around, and I did as well. So I think it's very important to begin to tune into that inner temple. So devotion to me is showing up because you're called because you have faith because you trust because you want to connect with these gorgeous energies that are out there and not because you want something in return or not because you expect to get something if you're doing for example some sort of offering ceremony where you're uh you know for example in my tradition we do the spachos which are offerings to the earth and yes we put in prayers in there for perhaps what we you know what we're aiming to balance or what we wish to to um, create in our life but we make this beautiful big prayer bundle with it and the ceremony of doing that and, and putting the intention in it is in itself a deeply sacred practice 
so it's not so much that when we get to the point of putting this in the ground or in the fire that we then sort of sit there and go oh so now i'm gonna wait for these things to show up that i put in this prayer bundle that's not even on your mind yes you might put it in there because you're doing this beautiful offering but it's that practice of devotion of feeling spirit strongly in your heart so that you want to give and you want to connect with that energy and it's such unfortunately such an unusual way to approach life nowadays that it can take some time to get there but it's available to everyone if you do spend you know time and energy to tune into spirit you, you're going to begin to feel that devotion and feel that sacred thread running through your life so some of the ways that I show devotion in my life is I pay attention to nature. And yes, it's easier for me now because I'm spending more time with working with energy and I'm not rushing around, but you have to work your way there, right? So when I'm out and about, I might get a little synchronicity from spirit. Um, like a little bird might show up right after I thought of an idea I had or something like that. And I can feel it, that it was spirit, that it wasn't just a random bird, right? <laughs> so, because most of the time it would be, but when the synchronicity happens, I can feel it, that vibration in my heart space, right? And I acknowledge that. Or for example, um, today I was doing a, a client session and I got into a little bit of um, self-doubt and not doubting the medicine but you know every now and then we can just come across a challenge or we'll feel like the imposter syndrome or something like that so i had this thought and as i was working with this client i happened to look up and it was um i think 11 11 at the time yeah it was 11 11 and you know i was like thank you spirit i can feel the energy i can let that thought go you're with me and you know 11 years ago at the start of my spiritual journey I would have listened to this video that I'm making now going, she's loopy. She just picks up random messages and thinks they mean something. But that is only true if you haven't connected with this energy, right? Once you've tuned in and shed layers and done your healing and really started to listen, you know the difference of when spirit's guiding you and when there's a message and when it's just random stuff that happens. Um, I acknowledge it. So acknowledging the little breadcrumbs that you receive is a big part for me. Um, sometimes I'll come out of the shower, I might be going to put my clothes in the laundry and I walk past the dishwasher and it's 111 on it, right? And I'll acknowledge that. I won't just go, oh yeah, probably nothing. I'll be like, wow, thank you spirit for making me see that. And other little synchronicities like that, I always acknowledge and thank spirit. Sometimes I'll notice that it's a beautiful um, beautiful morning sun so I'll go outside for a few minutes and I'll just bask in the sunlight and I say thank you and I just feel the energy of the sun and I just thank spirit for that moment to stand there with nature just feeling this energy from this new fresh day coming over me So devotion to me is connecting with that energy, showing up from your heart space without expecting results or one plus one is two. You know, you're not doing things because you want something. You're doing it because that's the vibration you want to come from. That's the energy you want to hold in your heart. That's how you want to connect with spirit. That's how you want to live your life. Coming from that place of the word that's being placed in my mouth is grace. And it doesn't mean it's some sort of holier than thou thinking we're special, <laughs> not at all, quite the opposite. It's more about feeling that connection of being part of the web of life and the insignificance, yet the magic of being 
incarnated in a, in a body. And sometimes, you know, you might feel that when you're out on, for a walk and you have a little bird show up that just looks at you like this and you might connect with that energy of the bird and you may say, I'm not here to harm you. Or you might just, sometimes I even just say hi to the bird, you know, I'm a little bit weird like that. Um, so to me, it's a, it's a way of life. And this is always what the spiritual path was. It wasn't um, taking a course or necessarily uh, buying a ton of things, right? That it's, it's become a little bit commercialized sometimes in the West. So I think sometimes we make it so complicated. We think we have to have all these fancy tools and techniques and courses and whatnot, which are all fantastic. But we sometimes use all of that as an excuse not to do what it's really about, which is sitting with yourself and connecting with that energy and with spirit. And I think it, we also see it sometimes as very black and white, where we think, okay, if I learn this, then I know how to do that. But sometimes there are layers to that. So, for example, on my path, the way light shows up or the way beings shows up or the way energy is shown to me continuously evolves. Um, for example, the quality of light or the light that I bring through for clients changes. So now it's a different quality, it's the best word I can think of, of light than perhaps it was five years ago. So it's constantly shifting and evolving. So there is no end point for your journey, whether you work in this field or you're just, you know, looking for healing or for your own spiritual path. It's, um, that's actually the, the vision they gave me before this video was to talk about how it's like this, you know, we say the unfolding rose. It's the opening of the petals of the lotus or the rose continuously opening up another layer, another layer, another layer, going deeper and deeper within yourself. And as we do that, we become less attached to the ego, less attached to who we are and the roles we play and what's happening here and now and we become a bigger part of this expansive oneness that we're all connected to and at the start of your spiritual journey listening to a video like this might make it sound like oh my god what on earth is she talking about that is the biggest cliche ever and it is until you understand it and you feel it right um and that's actually when i was uh taking the medicine wheel at um you know, doing my initial shamanic training at the Four Winds, uh, when we go through the medicine wheel, Alberto Violdo was telling us that, you know, the first direction in the south, we shed a lot of um, traumas and wounds and stuff that, you know, generally we're aware of. This is the step one of healing, all the stuff that we know we have to fix, but we haven't, right? And then we go into the west direction, which is a lot about um, ancestral things and um, clearing the death that stalks us and stuff like that. All these kind of uh, another type of shedding. Um, and then when we come into the north direction of the medicine wheel, it's become that's when it becomes a spiritual journey. So up until you're sort of halfway through that process, it's not even considered a spiritual journey. So. Um, you know, that's why some things may sound as a cliche. I mean, sure, there are cliches out there. <laughs> it depends who you say, who says it and why. But some of the things that sounds like cliches are just cliches because we don't understand them yet. And when you feel that and you understand it in your body and in your heart, it actually becomes very powerful. So I think I mentioned in an earlier video that I had this experience a few, um, a few months ago where I all of a sudden had this sort of drop down into a deeper layer level of understanding of a word. Uh, one, the first one was kindness and then it was compassion. And it was almost like I dropped into this word and I was like, wow, I really understand this word now in a whole other level, on a whole other level. So it's an inner process that you take with spirit and with yourself and you don't need anything but yourself for doing that. Um, so to me, devotion is the spiritual path. It's feeling that call and living your life that way and beginning to have that be the blueprint for your life. It doesn't mean that we can't have a conversation that's not about spiritual things. It doesn't mean that we think all other paths are 
wrong and for those of you watching this you're probably all on very different spiritual paths anyways so it's not about that but it's about that inner devotion and understanding that there is more to life than perhaps you've been taught especially if you're living in the west and that sometimes or always <laughs> you know it's better to go really really deep within yourself and begin to create life from there so devotion to me is doing ceremony it's doing offerings it's showing up for spirit without necessarily expecting something in return and at the moment you know the last year i've been doing a lot of connecting with the land around where i live which is one of the um things i have to do that my um one of my indigenous teachers has um, asked me to do sort of mapping out the area around me and the directions the four directions but around me where i live not the inca peruvian ones and in doing that I've been making offerings and connecting and calling in different sacred spaces and land around me. And it would be easy to go, okay, I've called in this now, tick, 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 and I'm done. And, or perhaps giving up if it doesn't work or you don't get much. But it's not about that. To me, it's that devotion is that whole process of continuously connecting. And uh, for example, with I'm using this process as an example, because some places I connected with, were just amazing experiences with spirits showing up, spirits that I now work with and so forth. Um, I would say land spirits or, you know, I'm not talking about uh, past on people now. I'm talking about sacred beings. Other places, I got nothing. There was no interest from this land in me, right? But that didn't mean that I'm now thinking that's never going to happen. It just means it's not time or perhaps that particular land needs me to do more offerings or show more devotion before I can connect with it. And, you know, that I think is key to the spiritual journey, not showing up expecting to have a profound experience every time, but continuously showing up from your heart space and accepting the speed it's, um, you know, spirit takes you along your journey. But I wanted to share a few different ways, uh, sorry, a few different um, beautiful ways that star beings and higher energies shows up in sessions. And of course, when I work with clients, it's in sacred space. There's a lot of protection. There's, a, you know, a lot of work that goes into to my work and my medicine outside of the session so it's not just that we're sitting down calling in random beings because that could be a little bit silly you know you've got to be careful with what you connect with so um but every now and then these extra beautiful light beings show up of various kinds and it's nothing to do with me it really is so much to do with where the clients at on their journey and what they need and um where they're at so i can do three sessions in a day and they're going to be completely different i can't even explain to you the size of this tree um the middle bit out of this tree that's popping out it's probably a little bit thinner than a human so and this isn't even all of it this is just like what you can see from that side <laughs> it's gigantic so beautiful I wanted to share a few ways that higher level star being energies or whatever you want to call it comes through. And I, I'm not big on analyzing exactly what everything is, as long as the lineage and my intuition and whatever else is coming up shows me that this is of the light, this is meant to happen, or this is a guide coming through for clients or whatever it is, because of the work I do, I can, you know, feel the difference. And if I'm not sure, I will ask something like, are you of the light or is what's in your heart and if it's a being that's a bit of a trickster being that you know it's not meant to be there to help out they can't hide so you know this is why at the start of your journey or if you're um 
you know, um, doing a shamanic journey or, or doing work and you're not sure and you don't have a lot of experience, it's always good to ask these questions. But when you become very connected with the energy and uh, your medicine, if you're a healer, um, you know, it becomes quite obvious pretty quickly. But sometimes there are tricks to spirits. We're still going to be clever. But some of the ways, I'm going to close my eyes again just to tune in and remember so that I can talk to you from my heart and... Um, really share what I wanted to share today. So I was just talking about before how what shows up and how the energy shows up depends so much on where you're at on your journey. And the other day I was working with someone who's uh, got a very artistic side and is very open to spirit. And it's always fun for me because the inner wor world of someone who's artistic is often very colorful and um, there's beautiful energies around. Um, and as I was working on this person, a light being showed up that was huge. Now, I don't know if this was an angel on this occasion or a spirit guide or an ascended master. It wasn't clear and it didn't really matter. But it was this beautiful energy that was just this... I believe I described it to the client as um, like honey and sunshine, that kind of energy. At the same time in my heart, it felt very much like one of my guides that's got this very grandfatherly loving vibe. But it was humongous. It was showing up as bigger than the client and just surrounding, uh, surrounding this person. And he was doing work on her, pulling out energies and helping out and sort of doing this background work. And she could feel it. So that had nothing to do with me. The point was that in this healing session, the space was set up for this to be able to happen. It's, you know, as the healer, you're setting up the, the energy and you're doing all your inner work to hold the space for the client to heal themselves with their team in spirit and with my team. But it's, you know, everything is one. So sometimes I don't even go to the persons of mine. It, it's not really that important. But what's important is this space and this intention and the energy and um, gathering in sacred space like that so sometimes something beautiful like that will happen but it's not that I did anything different in that session versus the session before where it didn't happen this was what the client was ready for and this was her connection with spirit so even when you have healing of course the healer is there to facilitate but even then it's very much about you know the, what you do the rest of the time and how you're able to to step with both feet into this process uh, but that was particularly beautiful and um, something else that comes to mind recently was um, someone who's a channeler who's got this team of um, star beings that she connects with and I think I might have shared this in one of the earlier videos but they showed up whilst I was journeying and they essentially made me take a step back as they were doing their healing process on her. And it was a feeling of them having come from her home planet, perhaps, and, um, you know, doing some upgrades or whatever you want to call it. Who knows, right? Um, and that happened in this space that we held together for the healing. And I got to witness it and it was beautiful. Sometimes I'll see uh, like a Christ consciousness energy or there'll be today I was clearing someone's third eye and as I was pulling out this energy, I could sense all that sort of starlight energy behind this deep potential to have a really rich connection with spirit. So there are many ways that light beings and light shows up. Sometimes a past on relative will show up. It's not something I do um, on demand or something that I can make happen, but sometimes it does happen. And again, it's all about your journey with spirit. It's never about me. My job is to be the vessel and the channel and put in my work to be able to do that. But it's so fascinating to see how the shamanic energy medicine works so differently with different people and different sessions and different... Um, times in our lives and at different parts of our journey. Now I'm going to pause this for a moment because I want to have a quick think about what other story I wanted to share with you. Yeah, and sometimes it's not the visual, it's the energy you're feeling. So earlier on today I took a client on um, a journey 
the shamanic journey we went down into the lower world to do some clearings and cleansings and then we went in the lower world is not a bad place it's a place where heavy energies goes to clear so we kind of went into her inner world to clear things and then we journeyed to what we call the upper world which is kind of 5d consciousness and um the energy was just so beautiful and light and what happens is you can feel the air getting lighter almost and it can be kind of hard to come back sometimes we don't really feel like coming back from there because this is the state of bliss that we're all looking for that our soul's looking for and i think this is a big reason why i used to have a problem with alcohol for example because you're looking for that instantaneous way of getting into uh, a kind of euphoria but of course when it's a natural state through a deep spiritual process um yeah it takes longer to reach there but it also is a very beautiful and and, and sacred and powerful and life promoting way of doing it as opposed to for example drinking and of course drinking is never going to take you to that kind of level anyways but it's there are similarities with this kind of um high energies this um euphoria so i think that's why a lot of um people who are very open to spirit can get caught in addiction um so that was a total side note just based on my own experiences but sometimes the whole energy of the room shifts in a session and when i say session i'm not here just talking about client work or trying to sell you sessions with me when i talk about everything i'm talking about in this video is um you know your own work with spirit too or my own work with spirit where i'm just sitting in ceremony or sitting drinking my ceremonial grade cacao or meditating or whatever so i'm using sessions as an example because i see such a variation of experiences with different people but i'm talking way way beyond that i'm talking you know all the ways we connect with spirit sometimes when someone guides me through a session or through a meditation or something like that i connect with all these different energies that i haven't felt before and there was one experience i had with my shaman where he did a um a spirit flight for me which is um something we don't generally do that unless we're working with another practitioner or perhaps a client we've worked with for a long time because it's generally uh has to be someone who's kind of gone quite far on the path to be able to do it but it's essentially a process where we we lift the energy field and we sort of go on a little journey and i was so light in this state of bliss that i felt like a wave i felt like my energy was like this and there are different ways to feel that sometimes in a session you'll feel energy coming like this clearing you this was different i felt like all of me was just a wave um and i just couldn't care less about my body at that point i could have easily <laughs> probably slipped out of my body um <clears throat> and the interesting thing was that right around that time he said you're very light but stay in your body so he kind of told me not to to leave my body um and that was such a beautiful experience of the light that surrounds us and how much beauty there is in spirit that we kind of forget about day to day right or if we haven't experienced it so that was a very special experience for me but the point is not to escape the point is not to constantly try to escape into those um connections with life beings it's being able to connect with that and use it here and now we're incarnated on the earth for a reason we're here to to be in our body bringing our whole body with us we're not here to escape our bodies there would be very little point in that so that's another issue i see a lot where we kind of constantly wanting to escape it's more about connecting with the light till we can do that with our eyes open right um sometimes star beings and energies will show up as we're doing other work just filling the room or um other ways showing up connected to the chakras or um yeah all sorts of ways so there's so much magic and beauty out there and i feel a big part of this video today is telling you that through deep devotion and again devotion does not mean that you're um devoting yourself to something that's you know higher than you or that's giving you rules and restrictions i'm talking about devotion from your heart um to spirit however that looks for you but the more you can find that in your life and live life from that space and from this very calm state of 
receptivity and a balance between the masculine and feminine and not constantly chasing or rushing or you know missing life because we're so busy right the more you can do that the easier things get and the more easily you're going to hear spirit and connect with spirit and it's going to feel as i said you might be out for a walk and you're getting little synchronistic messages on a whole other level than you ever did before so it's a process and um So a big part of this video today, I think, is about sharing with you that you don't have to be born special or gifted. I'm quite allergic to the word gifted because I think everyone is able to connect with spirit, but most people don't want to devote their life to doing it or taking years and years of training and you know forgetting 90% of everything else we're doing to do it but it doesn't mean that you couldn't do it of course some people are born with abilities that you know make it easier and some people are born with abilities that make other things easier but I think we're all able to connect with spirit in different ways and the ways we can't yet connect we can learn with time but your journey is unique so the importance is to harness what's within you what you're called to what brings you joy the, the stuff that comes naturally to you and you don't have to as I said be born special I did not have any paranormal experiences as a child I was not born seeing you know spirits walking around the house I had a very earthy grounded childhood in nature uh, when I was a teenager I did get quite interested in um, tarot and spirituality and it didn't last very long because it kind of went right over my head and then I launched myself into science and psychology and then in my mid-20s it came back to me but it was a gradual process and I've learned gradually 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 so this is how I can talk about high energies and devotion because I've walked it it's not something that was just randomly served to me on a platter you know it was a deep calling in my heart but it was a very very slow process to get to the point that spirit called me to be a shamanic healer so don't feel that I know sometimes there's a tendency when I share a story that's really beautiful to me uh, for people to say oh wow that's so exciting that that happened to you I wish that would have happened to me that used to be me because I didn't have those stories until I decided to constantly put one foot in front of the other and making my life about my spiritual path why because it was a deep calling I wanted to be of service I was excited about it it brought me joy I could see there's so much to explore and slowly I began to realize that this is what life is about because if I believe that there is more to life than my physical body I want to focus on things that are not just for the here and now in this lifetime I want to expand my soul and my connection with spirit and face my soul lessons head on so that if there is another you know life after this or you know if my consciousness survives death so to speak that I can you know expand and and have amassed as much um spiritual knowledge as I was meant to do in this life you know so to me it makes sense but that doesn't mean that I want to escape my body or that I don't want to be in the here and now or that I don't enjoy the human things uh or the day-to-day -day things quite the opposite I love grounded natural basic human experiences you know sometimes in the morning I just smell my essential oils and I'm like wow I just get so much pleasure out of just this smell right so it's important to have a balance between reaching for these really high energies and anchoring them here and now and having those very earthy human experiences and connections and and you know creating in the world we live in so my point is don't think that you can't have a very sacred deep spiritual life experience just because you weren't born with a ton of you know strange experiences or you weren't born super gifted as as you you know some people might call it so 
I think this was a bit of a, a video that covered a few different topics just from my heart. Some people might have thought, wow, that's really confusing. She just went left, right and center there. But it's what was in my heart today and what I felt Spirit wanted me to share. And I thank you so much for those of you that have watched my other videos or had sessions with me and shared your stories. And I'm learning so much from you. And I'm so grateful to each and every one of you all the beautiful light and, and you know joy you've spread in the comments and for all the beautiful comments about my grandma's story and um, yeah thank you so much and I will talk to you next time bye